Hello there, welcome to uh, Barbarian Guide. This one is for clearing maps fast. As you can see, we have 20 into double swing and uh, 20 to war cry and 20 to whirling axes. Those are what you need to deal damage with this build and then we got also 20 to the all skill shout whatever it's called i forgot and we got one point into all the passives and this is blunt weapon mastery that's not working correctly over here uh, anyway that's the skill points it's kind of easy up to you uh, what you want to do if you want to get plus three skills here or more life from battle orders either one is is good and uh, the remaining points you will have a couple of remaining points depending on your level you can go put in blunt weapon mastery over here uh, i have some clicks here in whirlwind only because i was testing the difference between putting the extra points here or there and I haven't respect yet but it's best to put in blunt weapon mastery for this build uh, the extra points that you might my might have at your disposal all right so when it comes to the stats uh, like I said I haven't respect yet so they're kind of all, all over the place <laughs> but uh, you, you get the, the least amount of strength that you can get away with and you get enough uh, vitality so that when you uh, use battle orders you have around 2300 life or more uh, it depends how you how how well you you play barb honestly uh, you can get away with lower life or you might need more life uh, before you get used to the class and the, the play style it's not the easiest to play in my opinion but yeah, everybody is uh, different. Some people think it's easier to play Zork and some don't. So it just is what it is. And then if you have leftover uh, attributes, you can put into Dexterity because that will boost the uh, Whirling Axe damage. Now, uh, I will say that uh, Whirling Axes are, are pretty good even though you don't put that much into Dexterity. If you have other gear that gives you a lot of plus all skills, um it's uh, already quite good you want to have about 4000 uh, whirling axe damage that way uh, when you're playing in a solo game those axes will one shot the monsters that's what we're after you know we want the monsters to, d to die from one axe and uh, that's what they do all of them except uh, those uh, blunderbores uh, but yeah, yeah, you kill all mobs in one uh, one spin with uh, about 4,000 Whirling Axe damage. Alright, this resistance says uh, you will get a lot of resist just by uh, having the skill charms for masteries. So that's an awesome part about this build in my opinion. is Because uh, there's so many stats you want to get on Barbarian since it's melee. And all of that but this is at least one thing that you don't need to worry about with this build because you have tons of all the rest from the passive natural resistance over here and the skill charms that boost it okay let's uh, hop into the game and show the gear here is the game and um, what we have here is uh, is pretty unique. We have a new season. We can make synth. We can drop synthesized items, and uh, I happen to have a pretty nice one. Uh, it's not the best in the world, but it's pretty damn good. Um, let's just go with the weapon first. Uh, you don't need this weapon, but what's good about it is plus five all skills, ignores target defense, plus grim ward, and it has a lot of damage. You need to have a decent amount of damage uh, from your weapon on this build 
to be able to life leech and mana leech enough to play the game honestly like basically yeah if you can't get full life and full mana from whirlwind it will never work so i have this equipped it's the best i have right now but there's other things as well that you can use like this we have this it's my old loot filter by the way but there's still the true to it it's the best whirlwind weapon if you don't consider synthesized weapons so i keep this in stash because it might be useful to have decrepify when killing an enemy in certain situations certain maps or certain player count whatever you know what i'm saying so what you want to do here is you want to put requirements and have damage jewels into this axe enough so that the strength requirement goes down so that it matches with your other gear so you're not having to put too much into strength because you want all those extra points to go into dexterity after you have your life at a good uh, amount so this is a nice item to aim for between this and that um, they're kind of similar this one is a little bit worse maybe 10% uh, worse than the staff that I'm using uh, mainly because this staff has a very high minimum damage also very high maximum damage but the damage spread is is very even so it will hit almost exactly the same damage with every hit and that's just gonna make it so that it clears faster because i know before i even spin how many spins will it take to kill this monster because i know exactly how many how much damage this spin does you know so that's a lot you know you will get used to that obviously later when you play more so so when you play more barb you will get used to how to you know predict what's gonna happen when you spin and uh, this really 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 helps with that um, all right then we have a, another interesting aspect of this build is you can use uh, different armor for this build um, right now i'm using enigma i just made this this morning i'm using a full plate male base because i like the way it looks and uh, the the thing about enigma is you don't have enhanced damage uh, sorry on enigma you don't have enhanced defense you have just flat defense bonus so the the base of enigma it matters like it totally doesn't matter so just go for what you think looks better as long as it doesn't have a huge strength requirement and that's the thing here i like the look of the full plate mail but if it would be a hell version, it would have a ridiculous strength requirement, like 200 plus. We're not going to use that. So we get it from normal, and it has 73 re strength requirement. What's good about it is the plus all skills. And, and this is actually the first patch that Barbarian actually benefits from all skills items in a big way. And that's because if we use Whirling Axes, yeah, those all skills will increase the damage of Whirling Axes. And all the other stuff on Enigma is awesome as well. Uh, I think at this point uh, you, you probably know Enigma is very good. Um, it, all of the stats are good except plus defense, I guess, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, another choice that I was using for a very long time was uh, because it was cheap to get and I don't know, had an interesting stat on it. So I wanted to try it. And so I did. It's a steel carapace. You want to have this with at least three sockets, otherwise the strength requirement will be too high. And you put in enhanced damage requirement jewels in the sockets, so you bring the strength requirement down and you get some extra damage. Now the interesting part about this uh, armor here is it has damage absorbed 10% and minus enemy physical resistance 5%. So that's what you want to... That's what's interesting about this. So this one is a little bit more tankier than the Enigma. So if you're running like a play rate game or maybe you don't have other stuff, you know, you may, might not have Jabber already. So you might get this as a stepping stone to to start clearing maps. This one is really good, actually. It's, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just tankier than Enigma. And uh, therefore, it will also be slower than Enigma. Enigma has a lot of faster run walk. So that's an option if to consider if you want to go that route. Um, it has cold resist as well. Cold resist is something that you will have the most likely have least of uh, when you play a Barbarian due to the, the gloves that we're using on every Barbarian build. So uh, that's that's usually why uh, cold resist is pretty good on Barb, actually. So 
there's that and there's also this uh, someone just dropped this in a in a game and i picked it up it was some guy quit the game so i picked this up and this is something i wanted to have and try out uh, it, and it's also a very good option for this build because it gives plus two all skills it gives life leech and it gives a little bit of strength a lot of resist that you don't really need it gives physical damage reduction by eight percent which you do need uh, enigma also gives that physical damage reduced but this one is for like conviction map low resist map play rate like some gnarly shit that just gonna wreck you you can use the chains of honor just to stay alive more easily in a in a lower resist or conviction map that's really what it's for so we keep it in the stash here just in case uh, i honestly i don't recommend using this unless um, for that specific reason it, you don't need this at all honestly and uh, enigma is better uh ob but it costs more obviously but <laughs> whatever and it is what that's that's what i think about it anyway all right um then uh, the helmet Arya's face obviously uh, th this, yeah laying of hands uh, you want to get all res slam on this or life on melee hit if you want to feel safer around physical immunes up to you honestly it doesn't really matter too much that life gain on hit is not very significant it's like a maximum 14 on melee hit i believe and each spin is like what is it i don't remember how many hits you do with a spin maybe it's like seven so it doesn't heal that much even if you uh, have this with the best uh, roll on that particular slam uh, i don't really like that slam be because you have so much life leech compared to what the life on hit gives you it just doesn't fucking matter honestly anyway uh, boots this is pretty interesting in my opinion i got the marrow walks on the reason being is uh, it gives 20 run walk it gives run walk you know at least a little bit like all boots do uh, but it do does give a lot of decks and strength so we can up to 20 of each dex and strength so we're saving 40 stat points here so that translates into more decks which mean more damage on the whirling axis another interesting thing about this is half freeze duration this is an epic stat to have on barbarian because we're not gonna use raven frost uh, raven frost is trash when you ha when you're playing whirlwind barbarian believe me or don't i don't care but that's uh, the way i think about it um you don't need to be not frozen because uh, whirlwind will hit at the same attack rate regardless of everything you can be affected by decrepify cold you can have the slowest weapon in the game it doesn't matter in path of diablo whirlwind we hit at the same pace every time and if you're cold it doesn't matter however when you're done spinning you obviously don't want to be frozen anymore and that's where the half restoration serves you because it during the time you're killing the stuff you're spinning the cold will wear off and you can keep running fast as soon as you're done so you want to get half freeze duration on the boots and the only way to get it is marrow walk and it happens to have life tap charges and 40 stat points and that's just a really good boot honestly uh, for this purpose then we got the belt i think this is the best belt in the game for barbarian on all builds uh, except maybe warcry but whatever on all the uh, <laughs> barbarian that hits with a weapon uh, i think this is the best one because it gives a lot of physical damage reduction and it gives life stolen per hit. Uh, you're gonna have so much life stolen per hit, as soon as you hit one monster it's full HP and that's what you want. So string of ears, you try to get the physical damage to 15 and the good life leech. You don't need 8 life leech but the, the physical damage taken reduced you want to get to 15 on this because this thing is cheap uh, so you might as well get a good one. And then we got the, the amulet. This is the best amulet for barbarian uh, whirlwinds. Uh, on all whirlwind builds, this is the best amulet because it gives uh, two all skills and it gives damage and it gives damage to undead and demons. Yeah, d damage to demons, damage to undead. That's why it's good. Uh, amulet doesn't offer much for barbarian, uh, to be honest. So this is the best we can get. If you want to consider using high lords, I will recommend you don't because when you are using whirlwind, Things like chance to cast a spell when hitting, uh, chance to deadly strike, chance to critical strike, chance to crushing blow, all of those chance to on hit 
will be greatly reduced, actually reduced by 66%. So a High Lord giving you at level 99, if I remember correctly, 36 Deadly Strike will only give you 12 when you are spinning. Also your attack rating will be reduced by 50% when spinning, so having extra attack rating on this is nice. Um, then we have Ring, uh, this is Ring number 2. This one is going to be replaced by a Bull Kathos hopefully soon. Um, but it is what it is. It gives some pretty good things anyway. It gives half freeze duration, life stolen. And the rest I don't give a fuck. But it gives uh, half freeze duration, life stolen. I mean it's pretty early in the ladder. This is what I have basically. This one was gifted to me. It's absolutely insane this ring. Um, this is the kind of ring you want in the, the left slot. And then you want a Bull Kathos in the right slot. Uh, you want you need to have some kind of mana stolen per hit. So in in my opinion, you 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 pretty good to use it on a ring. Uh, it's gonna be uh, this. I have two percent, I believe, in total, so, and that's enough uh, because this weapon has really high damage. That's why it's enough. If you don't have this high damage weapon, you need more mana leech to, to sustain. Mm -hmm. So you will notice when you start playing if you need more mana leech or not, and usually. Uh, if you ha let's say have a weapon that's uh, you know maybe one socket uh, uh, executioner's justice if you have uh, one socket executioner justice for example and you can't fill it with like a lot of uh, enhanced damage jewels and you know you, you might be better off putting a vex in there or a perfect skull in there or or getting a uh, two mana leech rings here you, yeah there's some numbers to look for uh, when you are building barbarians so so you kind of need to find a middle ground there it, you will you will notice when you start playing if, if you're needing something you know like mana leech or whatever um, but yeah and then uh, something else that uh, is important to know is uh, like I said before attack rating is uh, divided by two when you are spinning so you're losing half of your attack rate and while spinning so having uh, ignore targets defense in your weapon is very 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 important so keep that in mind but also keep in mind you can use uh, breath of the dying uh, two-hander if you want nothing wrong with it but you will not you will have uh, a harder time hitting the monsters but it will work like don't get me wrong it will work with the breath of the dying and if I had like Breath of the Dying here and the rest the same, it definitely will work. It will just be a little bit uh, more inconsistent because you would miss more. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely do that. It's uh, up to you. You don't need something crazy like this or that weapon. Uh, you really don't. But but yeah, I'm crazy, so I get the crazy weapons. Anyway, inventory. You want to have mastery skillers all the way. You want to have Annie and Torch. Torch is cheap for Barbarian usually, so you want to get Torch pretty early because it gives three uh, skill levels, and that's uh, the most beneficial stat that you can get on this build. Is the skills plus skills plus skills all plus skills is just the thing to look out for. You know, when you're looking for a synthesized weapon, maybe if it has all skills, it's gonna uh, gonna be really good. If it has ignore target defense and all skills, it's gonna be even better. But at the same time, you need to have a decent amount of two hand damage up there or one hand damage depending on your choice like what you want to play a one hander with shield or a two handed weapon like me it's up to you both will work obviously a shield build will be a lot more tanky but you will have less whirlwind damage both works just go with what you want to go with I can recommend if you're going with a shield and sword build that you get some facets, some physical damage facets. And you want to find the ones that gives minus enemy resistance 5. And that physical damage increase doesn't matter. You want to get that um, minus enemy resistance to 5. And then you can just go 3 uh, plus damage uh, facets. It's going to be totally totally fine it, the difference between those two and like a 5-5 five five and a 5-3 is almost nothing uh, the reason being is uh, these synergies here 
See how they give 14% damage per level? So if you get a faucet with 5% extra, it's not even one synergy point. It's like one third of a synergy point in extra damage. And it just not worth it, honestly. Because those five fives are ridiculously overpriced. Uh, so you can use minus five plus threes if you want to do a one-handed build. It's going to be very, very strong still. And... Um, Another thing that I want to discuss uh, when we're on the topic of physical peers is uh, is bash. So when you when you put all your points here and and you don't have much points into mastery or whirlwind, your damage is going to be quite low. Your whirlwind damage is going to be quite low comparatively. So look at that. It's like 4k average or so. If that's very low compared to someone who would max whirlwind and max their masteries for weapons then uh, so so you will have a, a shitty way to deal with immunes bash will not be uh, efficient because your weapon damage is very low see how this deals 110 percent off weapon damage uh, and then converting to magic damage well, you have low weapon damage. Using bash in maps on like Blood Lords is a waste of time. And what you want to do instead is you want to uh, have a Grim Ward to use against immunes. And honestly, if you're speed farming, you're trying to farm as fast as possible, fuck them. Just run past them. Don't even bother with the immunes. Your whirlwind damage is... is it's not too high enough, in my opinion, where you can like stand and spin and leech and stuff like that with uh, just the Grim Ward down. I mean, some of them, maybe the Dark Shapes, but Blood Lords, hell no. It's not worth it just to spin, spin, run past them and fuck them. Like, don't be in bother. You clear more maps, and we get a lot of maps this season, so uh, like burning uh, through the maps is actually very beneficial, and just fuck all the immunes. Don't worry about that. Not worth it to... To, to bother with all right so then we got another thing that we're going to discuss uh, pl play rate games versus play one games so this is a play one game gonna go into just a map here uh, let's just take this for example here we got blood lords so let's see what happens in the map when we play I'll show you what i'm talking about it's a bit loud. all right so Look at that one shot easy. You don't even need to see those this one died, he got not he didn't get hit by the staff, he got hit by the axe. So here we have some immunes. We have uh, probably a group of elite blood wars in here, because that's usually how this map turns out. You start the map and it's like the most insane group of blood lords as soon as you get in. I guess not this time. But anyway, see here we have lots of uh, blood lords. There it is about 10 or so and then they die pretty fast because my my weapon damage is very high and my whirling axe damage is very high i'm doing like 10k damage like with every spin but when we look at the bash see it's very low we're gonna need to bash him maybe seven times have a look at this we're missing oh, there's another elite group so let's just spin through this shit a little bit so we don't die and this one is dead. okay so when we use bash on him see it's like chunking maybe 10%, 15% of his life. It's not worth using bash on them. And if you don't have a weapon like me or or similar, then I don't recommend even wasting time on these blood doors. Where is he? Look. Uh, he's affected by Green Ward and I'm using bash and it's still it's not fast enough in my opinion to, to justify using it. If we only use bash, it's gonna be a lot slower as well. Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't even know. It's like 15 hits. Because I missed a few as well. Even with ignore's target defense, you're gonna miss a few hits. So, so, so I would recommend if you don't have a really, really good weapon, then don't bother with the blood lords. Just to run past them. It's not worth your time. Because you will one-shot everything. Everything else is gonna die in one hit, so why bother fuck around with these mobs that don't, you know? It's just a waste of time. And we have just a lot of maps that drop, and you can reroll the maps in that this season. So, yeah, don't worry about the immunes, honestly. Just better to skip them. And uh, th th this weapon actually helps to skip the immunes. 
sure, the, the Crepify also gives minus 50 uh, physical damage reduction to the immunes, but it's a level 6 Decrepify. Sure, it's a decent area. It's enough area to Decrepify everything in your wake, uh, or in your path, rather. Um, as soon as one mob dies, everything Decrep, or two mobs, I guess, is 50% chance. Um, so this one helps to, to reduce the physical resistance, and therefore your axes will do a decent damage even without a lot of all skills. So that's what's good about this. But when it comes to immunes, I don't really recommend, you know, using this on immunes. I mean, I have such a incredible damage, but maybe this one is actually better than before, you know, because I stopped using it a few days ago. But I got some things since then, but let's just show it. I have one in Edge Weapon Mastery, by the way. Um, so I do have the weapon answer for this weapon, but you can see the damage is very good, and I only have two jewels in it. And let's try and we're going we're getting the procs. See, there was a curse proc, but they die immediately when the curse hits, so it's hard to tell the, if it's working or not. They curse and it just dies. <laughs> curse dies. So it's like, see, he got decrepitified over there. It's a decent area. It's about this big, so you're gonna hit the target. But like, if you don't have that much uh, all skills and you're using this, look at that blood lord. It's taking a while to kill him, even if with the crepify on. And this one here also the crepify, and it's gonna wear off. So it almost wear off at the end there. So um, I would recommend skipping rather than spinning like three, four times on these things or casting green ward and. I don't have room without the weapon that I have in stack. <laughs> I don't recommend uh, wasting your time with those. Uh, yeah. But play uh, the game you want. I'm not going to tell you what to play and what, whatever, but you know, I'm just going to recommend what I think is the best way from, for me anyway. Alright, then the, another thing about the weapon is the range of the weapons. Um, th this one has two range, so it's lower range th than this one. I think this one has three range. Uh, Warpike has four range, if I remember correctly. So, Warpike has the longest range in the game, but uh, it has a ridiculous damage spread. It goes from like 250 to 1000 on like a unique one, something like that in that ballpark, anyway. So, it, the weapon spread damage is just way too high for me. It I never really liked the Warpike after I started using other weapons like uh, uh, Glorious Axe and uh, Archon Staff. I never really liked the damage spread anymore. It's just it's just trash. Like you don't need a 10,000 hit. You only need to hit for 5k and that will kill most mobs in one hit. So why you want to get a weapon that hits sometimes 1k and sometimes, you know, 15k? Makes no sense to me. So Archon staff, honestly, best weapon. And then uh, what, what else can we discuss? We can dis discuss the durability of the weapons. So previous seasons we needed a Zod in every weapon. Yeah, it, if it wasn't indestructible it was useless because you had to repair it four or five times each map. This is not the case anymore. Durability has been increased on everything. See how we got 215 durability on this thing? <laughs> That's insane amount of durability and the chance to lose durability when using items has been also uh, decreased. So uh, this staff, for example, let's see, it's got 117 durability. This will last for a map and then a little bit more. So definitely going to last for one map and a little bit more. So with this weapon having 117 durability, it lasts for one map and then a little bit more. So you repair it once every game. This one will last almost two maps. But just uh, look at the durability of the weapon that you're using and you will you will know with those numbers you will know about how long it will last. Uh, some people would like to put a Zod in it. Sure, I don't have nothing against putting an indestructible rune into your weapon just because you won't have those situations where it breaks and you're not ready <laughs> when it breaks and you're just getting stomped because you lost your weapon mid whirlwind or whatever. Sure, if you want that quality of life, go for it. Uh, it's not my cup of tea. If we, if I don't need it, I don't get it. That's my playstyle. I only get the the highest shit, and then if I don't need something, I just don't, don't get it. So that's me. But you do you. Uh, anyway, uh, then we have something else. We have a knockback to discuss here. 
uh, knockback. So the whirling axes do knockback, and uh, <laughs> there's been some word around that you, you can't hit the bosses with the the whirling axes. I think it's not correct. I don't think it's true, honestly. I just think you have a shitty attack rating, uh, and that's why you think it doesn't like work. And the bosses, you know, they they will uh, like when I was spinning at at Bale before, uh, it I would have like twenty percent chance to hit the 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 boss. <laughs> Because the attack rating is so bad without all the passives and the and the clicks into a whirlwind that you, yeah you're landing like twenty percent of the hits only. I think that's the the main reason people think that it doesn't like whirling axes doesn't hit the the target in front of you and that you need a knockback glove in order to hit single targets with this. But I, I think it's false. Um, I think it's false. You're not proking the axes because you're missing the target and that's the reason. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Anyway, I noticed uh, when I got uh, more levels, and the sure he gives ignore target defense, but it doesn't really work on bosses. But I start to notice that that when I got uh, when I got this that has a lot more damage on the weapon than the executioner justice. Uh, the bosses will die so much faster, uh, like, rid like ridiculously faster, and I'm not sure how, why, honestly, if it's maybe ignore target defense is working on map bosses, or maybe not. If ignore target even works on map bosses, then definitely those axes are hitting the, the, ta the target that's next to you, and, um, but yeah, we will have to figure that one out. Uh, let me know what you uh, what what you come to conclude uh, when it comes to the knockback or not. If you need it, if you don't, if it increases your you know uh, your uh, single target damage uh, like against a boss or whatever. If, if it does, or not. yeah, that's the only thing that's like a question mark for me right now. Uh, but anyway, everything else I think I got it figured out by now. Then let's have a look at just this stat screen right here. I'm gonna discuss this a little bit so you you can get get a good idea of what we're trying to achieve to in order to be strong. Uh, you want to get this is uh, the maximum amount of ma magic find that I recommend. You will find way too many items and not enough orbs of corruptions to even corrupt those items. So if you have this ma this amount of magic find, it's like too high in my opinion. It should be around a hundred. So only Enigma and no nothing else, in my opinion, is effective. And then when you're solo mapping, and the, this is going to drop so many Grand Charms, it's going to fill up your inventory in like two, three minutes, five minutes maybe. And in some cases, like in that Musty Crypt, you go, you, if you inventory full and there is a lot of Blood Lords around guarding that piece of uh, gear that you're trying to loot, it can kill you <laughs> because you can't get to it. You know, uh, it's just annoying, honestly. Uh, it, <laughs> it sounds like a first world problem. It's annoying to get too much drops, but it's true. Uh, you don't want to get too many small charms. Uh, sorry, small charms, okay. But you don't want to get too many grand charms dropping and feel like you need to ID all of them. So that's what happens when you get a lot of magic find. The blue items will drop like fucking crazy. So that's why I say... You don't want too much magic find. You want to find the high runes and the uniques. And honestly, around 100 magic find, you're finding the, about the same amount of uniques anyway. S than uh, like 400 magic find or whatever. It's just that you get a shit ton of charms and jewels uh, with more magic find. And you don't really want that, honest. Uh, that's Well, that's my opinion, I guess, you know. Anyway, enough about magic find. Let's talk about uh, cast rate. Uh, <laughs> I don't have cast rate. Uh, but you can get 10 cast rate uh, on the ring, or you can get 20 assist. I don't remember. Now let's have a look. I have the website here. So you can get, yes, 9 or 20 cast rate on your rings if you want to cast the Grim Ward faster. The teleport is whatever, because you have a cooldown on Enigma. 
Um, so you can get 10 or 20 cast rate on the rings if you want to be faster, or you know, you can use uh, uh, Arachnids if you want to. F I have Arachnid here. You can use this belt if you want, it gives you 20, and then you have a faster Grim Ward, but you're lacking 15 physical damage reduction and 8 life stolen. So this is not recommended, but if you want, it's, po it's, a, it's one way to go. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the thing is, you want to have, like I said earlier, if you don't remember, about 4000 Whirling Axe damage. That's all you really need to farm solo. Uh, but if you're going in a play rate game, more is always more, because uh, the monsters have way more life. And then uh, let's go to hit recovery. 48 is what I recommend of Barbarian. So we have a little bit more than necessary. So we could remove that. Oh no, we can't. Whatever. 48 is what we want to aim for. Um, attack rate. It does not matter. Attack rate. Uh, cooldown uh, is only because I have Enigma and I happen to slam cooldown reduction on this. I wouldn't pay for it, but I got it. So whatever. I'm going to use it. Uh, like 0.2 second uh, faster cooldown on warp. It's, uh, it's, it's something, you know. Um, I mean, there's not really much you can get on the boots except uh, 15 dexterity, I believe, extra. That would probably be something I would pay for. Uh, but this cooldown reduction doesn't really help me. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you why. Because on swap, I use the Holy Thunder on almost all my... Well, probably all of my builds except Sorceress, I would use Holy Thunder on swap. Because it gives a vanilla teleport. The kind of teleport that doesn't drain your mana. It doesn't have a cooldown. Sure, it's 60 charges. But that will bring you from Worldstone Keep 2 to Throne of Destruction, for example. And it would last you a map in a player 8 game. Or a player 1 game. 60 charges is just enough. Just, just, just enough if you use it, to, uh, you know, wisely. <laughs> if you waste the charges, yeah, you will run out of charges. But if you use it efficiently, 60 is, is plenty for a map. The other thing on swap that I use is uh, is this shield here. It gives 20 cast rate. So it's like this, right? If you have, if I want to, to make a teleport somewhere for other people to come in, or if I want to like, move somewhere really quickly, like I'm rushing a map boss or something, this swap is awesome because it gives us that 20 faster cast rate. It gives us a teleport that's not going to drain our mana. It's not going to slow us down. It's going to go zoom, 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 zoom all the way, right? And also you get plus one O skill Desecrate on this shield. So what is Desecrate? It's a Necromancer skill. And it looks like this. So it creates a pile of corpses here. So you can put the pile of corpses in and you can Grim Ward. So if you're fighting Bale or something that doesn't have any monsters around, you can make those and then have Grim Ward, uh, uh, you know, to help you in the fight. So that's what this is for. It also gives a chance to block, which is awesome. Uh, I think I have like max block with this kind of haven't checked I uh, almost 69 but yeah so you get a lot of block because you have a lot of dexterity so you might as well have the, the this shield I think there's no other better option than using this shield as far as uh, the holy thunder goes yeah if you want to use you know uh, heart of the oak or or something like that just to boost your war cries um, you can do that. I don't recommend it because the bonus is just trash. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing about battle orders, right? Look at that. If I were to put one more point into this, I get 1% life and 1% mana. Do you really think that will make any difference? I can tell you it won't. So having one click in battle orders, in my opinion, is how I... I would recommend you know you build every barb because it just does it sucks it just sucks it just sucks it's just plain and simple sucks uh, this ability sucks but you get it for free because you're going here so yeah <laughs> I think that's about it um, make sure I don't oh yeah let's talk about the maps I almost forgot the viable maps what maps should you run with this well, we can do Musty. We just showed a little bit of Musty right there. We can do Musty if you uh, disregard trying to kill the Blood Lords. You can run through the Musty really quickly. So you spin all the way. One shot all these trash mobs. Because the mobs in there are pretty low life. Except for those Hell Whips. Which are demons. Boom. 
this is why we have laying of hands. So we kill them just as if they were trash mobs because they are demons and this gives 250% damage to demons. So this is why we use this. Uh, you can use steel rents or ghoul hide if you want, but I recommend laying of hands because the bonus is 250%. Come on. You can't fucking compare to anything else. 250% is ridiculous. So laying of hands, definitely. This has been nerfed from vanilla. Vanilla is 300%. <laughs> With no roll, it's always 300%, but this in Pold is 250 max, but still it's a ridiculous number, so we get that. Uh, so musty we can do uh, if we uh, just uh, make sure we uh, run away from the Blood Lords fast enough. Uh, Dim Cellar is something that you can clear very fast with this build. I don't... Well, the only thing I can explain why it's faster in Dim Cellar is because the monster types in Dim Cellar are uh, squishy, and you have a good amount of monsters that will run really fast right at your face and suicide. And then you have those monsters that are ranged that you can chase with your whirlwind. So when you're whirlwinding in Dim Cellar you, or anywhere actually in the maps, you always go to the ranged monsters and let all those melee monsters follow you. So they get slapped by the axes behind you. Or if they come close enough, they get hit by the whirlwind and the axe and they will definitely die. So to clear fast... You, you, you focus on the ranged mob all the time. Go to the ranged mob, spin on the ranged mob, run to the ranged mob, spin, spin, ranged mob, spin. And then those melee monsters will catch up to you. And then you can just, if they are still alive, you can just do a little quick spin and they will die. Because they got hit a few times before and you just need to do a little stutter spin like this. Uh, stutter spin is like, you just spin like that. You know, a little, little tiny one. You don't need to do this. You can just do that and it, they will just evaporate. Um... So that's how you also a very important part about how to clear fast is how you actually move your character around, how you approach the targets and all that. Uh, in Musty Crypt, uh, that's not the case. Everything is melee, basically. So this that's why it's also fast to do Musty Crypt because all the monsters are coming right at your face and just dying to your damage. And uh, this one is uh, is uh, is also good to run. Both of these two are about the same clear speed, I would say, 23 minutes-ish at the at the point I'm at right now. It won't go up that much. Um, once you start one-shotting stuff, uh, the clear speed is going to be about the same. Uh, it's, it's not You're not going to increase the clear speed that much, or not noticeably anyway, by adding more damage or whatever. And uh, when you get to that point of clearing maps in 23 minutes, let's say, uh, I would focus on the... Uh, getting stuff that keeps you alive in a player 8 game like stuff like that like lots of life and shit like this uh, so you can actually level past uh, you know get a higher higher levels you know uh, to avoid dying too often because when you're getting close to max level you you, you can't die because you will lose like a whole day of progress if you do so i recommend uh, uh, these two for sure they are easy but the temple is the easiest one the, this one is really easy for Whirlwind Barbarian, always was, probably always will be. Uh, all the monsters in here is uh, easy to kill, basically. Nothing immune, easy to kill. The layout is nice, it's uh, corridors, pretty narrow, so you just go through a corridor and you hit everything on the way. So this one is also very good. And it got increased uh, area in this patch, it was much bigger than it used to be. I think I clear it in about... Well, it's under 30 minutes, so I, I, I know that much, but I haven't really checked, uh, to be honest. Uh, I just checked the dim cellar and the, the musty so far. I haven't really record, like, did a the timed run with the temple. Um, um, but you can also run, you know, white maps, frigid. You can run frigid. Uh, however, if you aren't careful or if you don't have l lots of life and uh, at least, you know, 20 physical damage reduction or 15 you know at the bare bones 15 if you're used to playing barb 15 pdr but if you're not then more you can run frigid as well the the reason why it's dangerous is because those uh, unholy corpses let me show you what i mean it's those charging motherfuckers that lives in nil attack temple here these ones they call something different in the the maps but these ones will fucking smash you you can get killed by them i still do sometimes when i'm not really you know paying enough attention i do die to those because they can just one shot you honestly so frigid is a bit dangerous but if you're low level 
it doesn't matter if you die. So you, you can run fridge it and just if you die, whatever, you go back and die again or whatever. Like just uh, you're gonna get a lot of XP if like you're level 80, let's say, and you just started mapping. Use your frigids because you're still gonna get shit ton of XP for 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 killing monsters in here. And if you die every now and then, doesn't matter. You know you're gonna level up fast anyway. But once you start getting, you know, 93, 94, 95, that type of level, then a frigid can be a bit risky uh, and maybe not worth the risk. So there you saw me just move a map over here. That's because it has physical damage taken reduced by 23%. We don't want to run that kind of map. It's just a headache that we don't need. It's just slow. We don't need that. So. When you get something like that, you just uh, put them aside, and when you have four of the same uh, category of maps, same tier of maps, you just cube it to, for the higher tier. And if it happens to be a red map of physical damage reduced, you reroll it. OC, P skull, three perfect skulls, or an OC, depending on, and then you can get rid of that physical damage reduced. Because this is the this is really bad. You know, you don't want that at all. There's other things that will slow you down, but don't matter. Like this one here, slow nearby enemies 20%. This doesn't matter. Run this just fine. Especially now that we, well, I, I have Enigma anyway. 20% slow is nothing. Uh, we're still going to be fast. Uh, one of the reasons we are really fast is because we have the mastery skillers and the, it gives a lot of increased speed here. So... Usually when you're playing Whirlwind, you will have about 29 from that. And we have 45 right now. So it's quite a bit different. Quite big of a difference. And then we go to Deserts. Uh, deserts are m much more dangerous than the other maps. And they have Blood Lords. And they have Council members that will destroy your mercenary. But uh, what really destroys a mercenary is this open wound. And the bleed damage... This one will this will kill the merc. It doesn't really matter what kind of merc you have. It will die. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, you don't need the merc to play this, but but the thing about the merc is, and this build is, since we don't have a lot of mastery and we don't have, I mean, since we don't have like maxed whirlwind and, and maxed weapon mastery, our um, our offhand enhanced damage will not be as high. We don't have fortitude, so that's also one thing that gives offhand enhanced damage. We don't have that much, so the look at that damage, 4k average, and then we go to town, so we deactivate the aura by going to town. Now it's only 3k average, so we're getting about 25% higher whirlwind damage by having a mercenary alive. So that's pretty big, in my opinion, and that's because we don't have that many sources of offhand enhanced damage. So... It's diminishing returns when it comes to offhand enhanced damage. Uh, so the mercenary is pretty good uh, to ha to keep alive. And to keep him alive, what I like to give him is a shaft stop and a Kira Guardian and a Grandfather. Uh, obviously, sockets is going to be really beneficial. But uh, the bare bones minimum, I would say, is a four socket Grandfather. And the uh, 3-socket Kira is cheap to get the 3-socket Kira. And the 4-socket Grandfather, it won't cost you much to get that. And then you can use a uh, CNC shaft stop if you want. Uh, like like you can see here, it, it, I have Doll Runes and a Melee Splash. And I mean, it's, that's it. I'm poor as well, you know. So this is what I'm running with. And it works decently. He will die. Like, it doesn't matter what you give your mercenary. He will not be tanky. And he will die in maps eventually. It's just a matter of time. Uh, so keep that in mind and that's one reason that I like to have teleport on swap like if you don't have enigma having a holy thunder on swap can say can enable you to save your mercenary from those situations where he's just standing three screens away hitting the fucking blood doors like a retard and dying because he's retarded you know so you can bring him back with teleport so you don't have to go to town because he is retarded and the mercenaries are always retarded and everybody knows this so that's the reason why we want teleport <laughs> And if you can't afford Enigma, definitely have Holy Thunder on swap. It's just such a convenient item to have. And it helps you map as well. It gives you a faster clear speed. Because in a lot of maps, they have these little cages and the walls. Shh. And then you have to run around the walls. No, 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 no. Fuck that. Teleport. Instantly there. Spin. Go next. So definitely have some sort of teleport on your character. 
Um, the grandfather, I like to put um, nom, 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 into it because uh, it gives him just full life whenever he hits something. And then an F rune, and then a Jar rune, and then a Cham rune. So the best would be three Am, Nef, Cham, Ja. Because uh, that would be the best for the, the, the mercenary to, to use. Ja gives Ignore's target defense, so he hits all the time. Cham makes the, the target freeze, so he doesn't get hit back by, let's say, a Bloodlord, which is trying to kill like a retard three screens away. So, <laughs> so that helps him keep him alive, because the mercenary is retarded. And then Nef will do the knockback, so that he can, so w he's not so easily surrounded by monsters, because that's kind of what kills the mercenaries: the density, the amount of monsters that's pounding him at the same time. That's what kills the mercenary most of the times. So th that that kind of rune into the weapon helps with that. Um, but if you don't have six sockets, you only have four sockets. It's am 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 Nef. That's it. But then you can get all the six socket and all the expensive runes later. You don't need to have six sockets on the weapon, like I said. Uh, the the helmet is the same. You don't. You only need like melee splash attack speed and and everything beyond that is gonna be nice to have. But at the end of the day, he will die. He will still die. Like even if you have fifteen attack speed, fifteen all rest jewels, or you have burr burr burr. Ja 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 in the sockets here on the weapon. I'm um, sorry on the armor and the helmet Even if you have that He will die. It's still a mercenary. It's still path of Diablo maps are still crazy hard to survive and for a mercenary You can't you can't expect him to survive without helping him by using teleport by healing him shift belt You know that type of stuff Wow, I didn't see this before. I, this is the first time I noticed this. This is interesting. <laughs> anyway, we can talk about this, I guess. Physical damage reduction. The, the cap in the game is 50%. So, if you want to go for, like all out, all in on the mercenary when you have just nothing else to do with the high runes, get the two burrs and then rest sockets, put Ja and one socket reserve it for melee, splash, attack speed, duel. That would be my recommendation to, for, to to gear the mercenary if you have that kind of uh, high runes uh, lying around without any use. Uh, yeah, but at the like I said, he will disappoint you. No matter how many high runes you throw at him, he will disappoint you. Anyway, uh, we talk. We didn't talk about the small charms, but let's talk about the small charms. Um, the small charms don't matter too much in this build because we don't have that much offhand enhanced damage So this kind of small charm right here is just over overrated for this build Obviously, it's good to have but it does just not necessary. Honestly, you can just get these 20 life I rather have 20 life than have like three maximum, uh, you know planes You know, if, you know I rather have 20 life than just damage because the 20 life will enable us to get more into decks which will enable more damage for whirling axes. So, so twenty life might actually be better than 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 this right here. Uh, well, not that obviously, but something with low life, you know, or no life, obviously. Yeah. So, so, so I was using uh, just life, 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 life on all the small charms up until not too long ago. A few of them dropped in my favor. Just lucky, I guess, you know. So obviously gonna use them, but. You don't need that kind of stuff. Uh, this build is pretty flexible when it comes to what you can use, honestly. It's pretty nice to have. Uh, and especially when we get into the synthesized weapons. You can make this build work with the uh, other kind of synthesized weapon. It'd be maybe better. <laughs> it could be better than mine, honestly. But that's it. There you have all the numbers and everything you need to know, honestly, about this uh, build. And uh, I hope you have fun making it. And I really hope you find a cool weapon, because I really like the cool weapons. And uh, perhaps you can share it with us all in the Discord when you do. Uh, but that's all. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Have a nice day.